In this hearing, we have a completely unhinged mom who went and kidnapped one of her kids, leaving the other two behind. The first five minutes is from a different clip. If you want to skip that, it's about four minutes in. But that clip is also really funny with a grandma telling all her daughter's business, including allegedly sleeping with her own half-brother. Don't forget to check out my new channel, Mom's Murder Madness. Let's get started. Muncie and Ezekiel Birchfield. Hi, Your Honor. I'm Janetta Birchfield. I'm Malachi Muncie and Ezekiel Birchfield's grandmother. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And we don't have any proof of service on either of the parents. Um, I was unable to serve um, uh, Mariah Birchfield, uh, unknown where she's at. And uh, the father, Michael Muncy, has a no contact order with uh, Mariah and both the children. And how long is that no contact order for? It's for one year and it was just put in place. All right. Probably not even two months ago. And you don't know where their mother is at at this point? No, last thing I, that we've heard from her that she was living in her car. Um, at a rest area on off the side of the freeway. Um, Sunday, we were going into church, um, and we went through there to see if she was there. Her car was there, but she would not come out of the car, and she had the whole thing blocked out. She was in the car with somebody. And, um, yeah, she is just, like, off the hook. She's um, her older brother, which is my husband's son, got out of prison a few months back, and they connected up, and... Um, from what my daughter was telling me, Ryan was telling me is that Jonathan is her brother, her half brother, not my son, but my husband's son, shot her up with them. They've been in a strong relationship ever since. And we're telling Ryan this is wrong. And also she's been in contact with Michael Muncy, the kid's dad, when they have a no contact order. Um, she was able, July, the CPS closed her case in July. She never came and got baby. She told the youngest, Ezekiel, she told us, I don't want him. I never wanted him. You can have him. Okay, let me stop you a second. Okay. At this point, without service on them, and there's a prior order denying the temporary petition, I think the best thing we can do is set this out about a month, and you can try and get her served in the meantime. Okay, and then um, CBS, is, they reopened her case up again. Um, and she's not following nothing that they wanted me to do. I had talked to her CPS worker and she said that today I need to let you know exactly everything that's going on. And the thing with us is we're having issues with like doctors making like easy. Uh, Malachi's got to, uh, he's got to be put under on uh, the, the 31st. And they can't do that without the mother there because she's legal guardian. And uh, like school issues, daycare issues. Uh, ma'am, ma'am. Yes. What I'm going to do is set this matter for November the 20, uh, no, November 30th at okay. 10 30. So you can try okay. and get her served. And in the okay. meantime, make sure CPS knows what the status is if they want to pursue uh, a uh, dependency proceeding. Okay. All right. All right. So let them know that it's until November what? November 30 at 10 30. November 30th at 10 30. Okay. All right. So, thank you. Okay. So um, so we have no legal say over them as is, even though they've been with us for several months. The baby's been with us since he was two months old. And he's 10 months old now. Yeah, I understand they have been, and hopefully you get her served soon. Again. Okay. All okay, right. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a great day. For that. Check and make sure one way or the other. It would appear not. So, who all have we got here? Malmers, Mr. Okay. Savage, Mr. All right. If you'll come up and have a seat, if you'll come up and have a seat. Your Honor, Amy Powers for the state of Washington. We haven't entered a notice of appearance, but the guardian just started receiving TANF with the um, kids. So, that's why I'm present. All right. Thank you. Have a seat. All right. And Ms. Smith, I think I want to start with you. If you'll step up here, please. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth in this proceeding? I do. And would you state your name, please? Mallory Smith. 
How long ago were you appointed in this case? I believe I was appointed in April of 23. All right. What is going on? Um, Your Honor, this matter uh, came to the court on a petition from uh, Ms. Yozanovich. Um, the children have known Ms. Yozanovich um, since approximately J July of 2022, um, but was voluntarily placed in her care in around approximately December of 2022. Um, both mother and father have um, a history of substance challenges. Um, father has a significant history of domestic um, and I would like for the court to understand that father has been present at some hearings, but has never participated or filed any responsive um, paperwork. Um, I've reached out to father a couple times and had no response from him. Okay. Um, at this juncture, we're at a place where um, mother has um, participated in inpatient care. And I believe it's my understanding that she's participating in therapeutic courts. Um, to resolve some other matters um, and to um, pursue and maintain sobriety. Um, in my conversations with the children, um, it was shared uh, a prior history of um, observing substance by mother and father um, and being, part, uh, being involved in um, very high conflict situations as a result of the substance and that, the lifestyle that that produces. Um, the children have come to rely on Mr. Zanovich uh, for the stability and consistency that they've been receiving. Um, they, um, I've done a home visit. Um, the children all have their own beds, uh, it's clean, void of any safety concerns. Um, they're engaged in schooling appropriately. Um, they've been able to connect and maintain peer relationships. Um, they do desire to continue their, um, to maintain a relationship with mother. Um, however, they have um, a strong feeling that there just needs to be a significant amount of time um, where mom can maintain sobriety before they would entertain or would desire to entertain overnights for extended time with mom. Um, but they, they do value being able to see mom with regularity. Um, the children are doing well. They're enrolled in Lexington Elementary. Um, by all reports, um, they are um, doing as they should be. Um, and and what has happened in the last couple of weeks? Um, so, from my understanding, uh, the last hearing that we had, we were, it was scheduled, or it was indicated that we needed to schedule this for trial assignment, and no additional filings had been provided by any of the parties. Um, so with that, it was um, assumed that maybe this matter had no longer had validity or that there was um, authority that maybe didn't exist. Um, it's my understanding that mother had um, came in and taken the youngest child. Um, and had them, had him in her care, um, and with the intent of getting the other two children in her care as well. Um, I don't have any data um, other than the criminal history searches and those types of things to, to indicate that um, anything significant has changed for mother to warrant um, her gaining care and custody of the children is appropriate at this time. All right. You have any questions you wish to ask of this witness? Um, no, I don't think so. No. Do you have any questions you wish to ask? Um, I do not, but I do have a piece of paper for you, and I wanted to apologize for how I acted towards you. That's a good place to start. You should know a heck of a lot better. Yes, I should. So sorry about All that. All right, we'll come back to that. Okay. Your okay. Honor, if, if I may, I, I did file a, a motion and an order to appoint counsel, depending on the outcome of this hearing. Um, mm -hmm. I think uh, I spoke with Ms. Winkles um, during the last hearing. She had reached out to me and said, hey, I'm, my books are closed, but I'm happy to take this one on because of the complexity. Um, so I did file that. If you don't have that in your records, I'm more than happy to provide that after the hearing for entry. Um, but I just wanted to make the court aware of that. Thank you. Okay. And have you had any contact with the youngest? I have not. In recently, okay. Yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to wrap my brain around all this. Mm. 
No, I don't think so. <laughs> Mr. Utsenovich, if you'll step up, please. You'll raise your right hand. Use right hand. Oh, sorry. Do you swear to tell the truth in this proceeding? I do. Be seated and state your name, please. Henry Yasanovich. Okay. Uh, so tell me about what's been going on since the 8th or what happened on the 8th and since. So on the 8th, um, Miss Ivy came in through my gra open garage door, um, tapped on the door, proceeded to come in, um, demanded that Braden gather his things, and she was taking him. She said that she had spoken with persons of authority that said that she is the legal guardian. Um, she gave me a post-it note with the sheriff's number. I called that. Of course, this was a Sunday. Um, I tried dialing that, just was getting voicemail. So I attempted to call 911, but because we kind of live out in the country, unfortunately wasn't able to uh, get you know, anybody to respond well after 30 minutes of her leaving. Um, she and left. Braden's home? Braden is now six. His birthday just passed on the 50th. All right. Um, I... I Honestly, I was a little shocked and just uh, really taken by the whole thing. She proceeded to tell me while she was in the home, my home, that she had spoken with uh, David McCoy, who's their father, who has signed um, the cassette consent. He signed it back, I think, in May, May 29th, I believe, um, who I have maintained contact with. However, at the time he was in jail, um, he is trying to clean up his record and he has been actively um he does show up for his visits, basically. Um, How often? Uh, he comes about uh, twice a month. Doesn't necessarily not on the days that I had put in the paperwork originally, but <laughs> we work it out. Um, she had told me that she had been in contact with David and that David agreed with this. That was not truth. That was not the truth. I spoke with David um, the day after when he got out of jail, and that was not the case. He did not know, and then he was actually served with paperwork while he was in jail. Um, she and also. What's told, going on since the eighth? Since the eighth, um, we she pulled them from uh, Lexington, which, as you recall, last Thursday, um, you told her to bring him back to Lexington. Now, I do understand it was not her fault that he's not at Lexington. He's enrolled at Columbia Heights, but that's because Lexington did deny uh, the request because she doesn't live in that district. So um, she did, by all accounts, make attempts to get him enrolled as per your order, um, but they denied the request. Um, so at this point, I am I'll concede to the fact that he probably should stay at Columbia Heights for the rest of the year. I don't want to yank him back and forth. If um, if he is granted, you know, for to come home today, I would transport him to and from Columbia Heights Elementary. And do you know anything about her living situation? I do not. I have been unable to obtain uh, her address. Um, she's given in her paperwork her uh, grandmother's address, which was mm -hmm. unservable. Her grandmother does not want to be served there. She does not want paperwork brought to her home. Um, so she, Miss Ivy was served via email, um, mm -hmm. for this hearing. And, uh, has there been any contact between Braden and his siblings? No, they, uh, reached, uh, Mackenzie reached out to, uh, Miss Ivy on Braden's birthday and her response was a picture of her and Braden together. Um, but no, we have not had any contact and the children are extraordinarily upset about it. Mackenzie cries most days. Okay. All right, thank you, ma'am. Step down. Sir, thank you. I'll raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth in this proceeding? Yes, I do. You. Sit down. State your name. My name is Tessa Ivy. What do you want to tell me? Um, well, they do talk over Snapchat, uh, McKinsey and Braden. He hasn't talked with uh, Colton at all, but we we make sure and tell them that they love them and stuff. Um, How long have you been in drug court? Um, a couple months, Your Honor. How much clean time have you got? I will have seven months on the 27th. Was seven months clean 
What on earth made you think that what you just pulled was in your children's best interest? Um, your Honor, um, they they do need their mother around. Um, you know, a lot of the visits that I we were trying to work out would get canceled, and um, I I need you to answer my question. You walked into the house without notice, jerked one kid, and left two kids there. I want you to explain to me why you think that was a good adult sober thing to do. So, Your Honor, I I didn't just jerk him. I had asked prior and told her prior, um, because I was trying to get into the Phoenix house at the time, but I'm in a sober Oxford house, women, children, Oxford house. And Brayden did say he wanted to be with me. So Okay, he's sick, so he doesn't make that choice. I'm asking you the same question. What made you think that walking in and grabbing one of your children and leaving two was a good, intelligent, sober decision? I had talked to several people and I would love my kids back in my life. The other two, the other two weren't. Whenever you get around to answering my question, let me know. I'm, I'm working on being, you know, the best mom I could be. And I really wanted my want my children back in my life. You get the impression that I'm not impressed with how you're going about it. Yes, uh, I'm doing the best I can. Which Oxford are you? I'm in the Dragonfly House. How long you been there? Um, since June. What else do you want to tell me? Um, he would like to spend the weekend um, with Kendra and the kids. I can't hear you. He would like to spend the weekend with Kendra and the kids. Like, I'm not trying to keep anyone from him or anything like that. Um, I've been really cooperative, and I'm not trying to, like, yank the kids away from each other. I'm not trying to be like that. I'm just. What do you call what you just did? Sticking up for myself, Your Honor, and my kids. Okay. Anything else you want to tell me? Um, I am in the process um, of starting a parenting class um, with Youth and Family Link. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to take my life back and get on the right track, Your Honor. And my children are very important to me. All right. Go ahead and see. You want this? What is it? It is the letter from my husband. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that it sounds like you did what I told you to, so I'm okay with that. Okay. Oh, ma'am, I'm really at kind of a loss. Okay. Thank God you are in drug court. You have all my appreciation and support for doing that. It's tough what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, A lot of people don't make it. I always am very, very impressed and proud of the ones who do. Uh, So don't let anything interfere with that. Don't let anything interfere with reestablishing your relations with your children. That includes your own stupid decisions. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. I don't want your children bounced back and forth. Me neither, Your Honor. And unfortunately, the way you went about this was about the worst way you possibly could. Uh, you didn't walk in and punch somebody. I'll give you credit for that. But you know, beyond that, do you understand the trauma that you caused to all three of your kids? Believe me, Your Honor, yes, I do. Okay. But I'm also trying to make amends. And, no, know, don't give me a butt. I want to make sure that we're on the same page. You understand that what you did 
It was traumatic for all three of your kids. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, from your standpoint, is there anything that the petitioner's doing that you think is underhanded, inappropriate? You should have your kids' best interest at heart. I appreciate the time that she's had and, and was able to take care of them when I was acting out and being irresponsible. Yes, but there's also things that I don't um, approve of that she does. Okay. So I'm I'm sober and clean and stuff, and I met her when I, just shortly before my addiction, and I met her and we drink together and everything else. She has pot plants there. She drinks around my children. Okay. She well, takes well, you placed the kids with her in December. Is that right? My mom did. Yeah. Okay. And I do appreciate the time, you know, when I wasn't okay. Ms. Farr, I'm looking for help here. On the one hand, uh, you know, obviously the way she went about grabbing one child was completely inappropriate, didn't show any appreciation for the damage she's doing to her kids. And the next question is what it's causing more damage. If I leave things as they are, or if we have the kid up sticks again. Respectfully, Your Honor, I would maintain that having all three children under the same house would be in the best interest of the children. Those children are very bonded to each other for a number of reasons. Um, I think that Mr. Zonovich has um, done an exceptional job of respecting the parent-child relationship and protecting the children across the board. I think that you would find that Mr. Zonovich um, would be more than happy to um, appeal and to abide by any order or ruling that you made to maintain and protect the parent-child relationship and support the children moving forward um, in a healthy and, and safe manner. I believe that um, all three children had good quality relationships um, in their school and their education. They get good interactions. Mr. Zonovich has made um, it made it available for fathers to maintain a relationship with the children despite his continuing substance abuse. He shows up when he's doing okay. The kids have good interactions with that. They're still safe. He agrees with those things. Um, education, mental health, all of those things, those things will be supported in Ms. Chisonovich's care. Um, and I believe that um, Ms. Ivy will have a um, have the potential for a continuing. Um, and hopefully improving relationship with the children. Ma'am, prior to October 8th, what kind of visitation schedule did you have? So we were going on the, what I had originally requested, which is, so Miss Ivy was every other, I think it was Saturday, um, the first and the third, I think it was, uh, I don't have it in front of me. And then dad was the opposite for on Sundays. Um, I did at one point ask her once they started football and cross country this year, Mickey and Colton or Mackenzie and Colton, um, if she could switch days from Saturdays to Sundays, just because sometimes they have practices and meets. Mm -hmm. Um, so which, let me ask another question based on what I'm seeing from the kids. Will they visit with their mother at this point? Uh, they don't want to go to her home. Mm -hmm. They, they, I've welcomed both parents into my home. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was, you know, stipulated supervised visitation. I don't hover mm -hmm. over them. They have free reign to my house. Um, they can go outside. I mean, I've got, I've got two acres, so okay. do whatever they want. You know, I'm um, just not leave with the kids. And I, I, uh, knowing the Oxford house situation. Uh, it would probably be an excellent place for contact. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think the kids would go along with what they're told? I, I think that they would. Um, Mackenzie right now is very angry with her mom for taking Graydon. Um, and, you know, keep in mind, Mackenzie is sort of raised Brayden when mom wasn't around and when dad wasn't around. So there's definitely a bond between those two that's unbreakable. So she's very angry. Um, but I think that if I talk to her and make her realize that, you know, these are steps toward repairing the relationship, 
I think she would be open to it. Okay. What's the Oxford House rules about uh, visitation with your kids? Um, they could stay at they could stay for up to, two weeks. Ma'am, you're very soft-spoken, and I'm old, and I have bad hair. Sorry. They could stay for up to two weeks or live with me, Your Honor. Um, I had talked to my older two before about staying the night on the weekends, and they were up to that. They were okay with that. Okay. They just they just didn't want to – my older two didn't want to jump right back into me, and I understand that. So I, I'm not trying to push or nothing like that. Okay. I tried to be very hard on you at the start of this and make you understand how unhappy I am. You understand why? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I know I messed up. Uh, now, having said that, you've got what appears to be a phenomenal resource here to help you. Uh, I know you've got a phenomenal resource in the Oxford House. Uh, I have yet to see an Oxford house that didn't impress that economy. Uh, the goal ultimately is that you've got all three of your kids back living with you in a, you know, I won't say a normal life, but in a good, loving life that you want. Right? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, it you know all those all the same. I don't want to call them slogans because that sounds like I'm demeaning. But all those same things that you're getting taught in treatment and through the drug court program apply very much so to your situation with your kids. Okay, so what I am going to do and what I want to do is try and set this up so that you and your kids have the best chance of establishing that relationship and establishing it as soon as possible. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, so now, having said all that, understand, I hope that what I'm doing is, you know, number one, in your kids' best interest, and your interests are completely secondary to that. Yes. Number two, I hope what I'm doing is in your best interest as well, and I think it is. So what I'm going to order is that Ms. Yovanovitch is has guardianship over all three kids, including Braden. The kids stay with her. Okay, uh, we need to set up a pretty liberal visitation plan uh, to include some overnights at the Oxford house. And again, you know, explain to the kids what that situation is. It's the best possible place for her and to improve that relationship. Uh, but I don't want, I'm not gonna order overnights immediately because I don't want to put the older kids in a position where they're uncomfortable or even worse, resentful. I understand. And you've got, obviously you've got a little repair work to do with them over the situation with Braden. Uh, I understand your desire to fix everything now, uh, but we've got to do it in a manner that's going to be, you know, in everybody's best interest. How regular is their father at visit? Um, well, he was just in jail for 45 days. So um, I can't say that it's regular, Your okay. Honor. It's, it's hit or miss sometimes with him. I. I guess what I'll say is that given his situation, his contact with children is completely secondary to her contact with children. Okay. You understand? Got it. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, Ms. Farr, can I put the bulk of the burden on you uh, to not monitor the visitation, but to make sure that uh, the kids are, it's going well for them and, and that there's no reason to backpedal. Okay. okay. Now, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take the burden of 
expanding this as things go well or not if they don't go well. And that that puts a lot on you. And if you don't, maybe there's going to be some conflict. I'm 100% committed to these kids and to um, seeing Tesla get or maintain her sobriety and a healthy relationship with these kids. I do 100% support that. Okay. So I've got two options. Option A is I can set up some kind of a schedule now. I'm not there, so I don't know what's going on. And whatever I set up now, if I do my best, is probably not. <laughs> oh, that's so tiny. I don't even know what you're trying to know. Good. I hate so much. Right. So it's not going to be, you know, I'll be, I'll be doing it with a very blunt instrument and not able to uh, see how the kids are doing and make those changes on a weekly basis. So if I leave it to the two of you with Ms. R available as the arbiter, if there are problems, uh, are you comfortable with that? Yes, Your Honor. It's just she's canceled a lot on the visits that I have. So I would appreciate somebody else mm -hmm. being there to help. Yeah. Well, uh, one time, Your Honor, I've canceled. Okay, hang on. Uh, there's a free co-parenting app that we can set up. It's called App Close. I'm able to be added to the group and be able to monitor and interject. Um, if we could use that as the means of communication, then we're all saying the same thing in the same place. Um, and any of that could be used if we print out if we needed to use it for the judge's review along the way. It doesn't cost any money for any of us to participate in it. I'm happy to follow up with an email to you guys for the app and kind of set some ground rules in that regard. Okay. And if it if everything goes sideways, you can get it back in front of me in pretty short order, but uh, I kind of suspect it's not going to. Uh, the people in the Oxford are very helpful. Uh, this is obviously something you want to talk with your counselors about, uh, both in terms of how you're feeling about it and how to proceed. And you know, if you want to go tell them, you, I'm an idiot, you hate me, that's great. Uh, just, you know, make sure that you're telling them where you're at. Um, I have weekly um, counseling appointments and all that, and I'm very open about, like, what I've done and where I'm at today, so. And, yeah, I, and it, it I may be. Hate you, I understand. It may be that uh, you want some, you know, professional third parties involved with your contact with the two older kids. Uh, everybody's going to have to keep an eye on them and see how they're reacting to it um my my mom would like like more visitation with the kids also so like um i don't know i'd like my mom to be part of that too if she, okay. so if she uh, to be i am a grandparent she, so i understand how much grandparents want to see their grandkids uh and i i know it's important it's again it's secondary to you reestablishing your relationship. Yes. Understand what I'm saying? Yes, you are. Okay. So I'm I'm really kind of kicking the can down the road from my standpoint. Uh, and I'm I think that's the best thing to do. To do a better job than me. Everybody be quiet unless I'm calling your case, please. Uh but it sounds like that's going to be the best way for this work. Talk to Ms. Farr before you leave. Sign up for the app. Everybody knows how to get back in court if we need to. Uh, you know, have a long talk with Braden. This has been wonderful. Thank you so much. And we're going to see a lot more of each other. Uh, but you're going to go stay with your siblings for now. And then go ahead and cry your eyes out tonight and move on tomorrow. Understood? Okay. Any questions? Only uh, about when Braden, I couldn't hear you. When Braden will come back? Uh, let's do it over the weekend. You know, have him go to school at Lexington tomorrow. Uh, uh, yeah. At Columbia Heights. Or, Columbia I'm sorry, Heights. Columbia Heights. So we're going to keep him at Columbia, right? I'm, I'm committed to that. Or should we move him back to Lexington? Well, A, I'm not sure what the school will let you do. The school is going to want, if he's living with me, the school is going to want him to go to Lexington. 
However, if you feel and everybody wants them to stay at Columbia, I will do the drive. It'll be inconvenient, but I'll do the drive to keep them at Columbia. Um, uh, we don't live in that district. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the thing with. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm kind of in the position where I think it's smartest for me to leave that to you guys. You know, if he's doing really well at Columbia Heights, uh, I don't want to interfere with that. Right. If that was a problem, uh, you know, maybe we need to reconsider or, you know, if this is going to, you know, if the school says change at over the Christmas break, you know, or I don't know. Uh, but I, as, as much as I feel like I'm kind of shirking my responsibility today, I, it will be better if you guys can make those decisions and if I do. He is, he is doing really well at Columbia Heights. Make sure she's on and Ms. Farr. Make sure both are on the list of people who can talk to the school. Uh, her, Ms. Farr, you said? Yeah. I thought it was Miss Smith. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So, but yeah, make sure everybody's on the list. Okay. Uh, and same at Lexington, make sure that their mother can contact the school, find out everything. The two older ones are actually at Huntington. But or, okay, I Huntington. Yeah. I thought. <laughs> I would, I would appreciate that. No. Yeah. And okay. All right. So any questions? Um, what, what day would you like me to take Braden there? Uh, I think probably Friday after school when all the kids are around might be a real good time for everybody okay. to say, Hey, okay. That makes sense. Okay. Yes. Okay. And I, I assume the older ones will be looking kindly on you when you bring Braden back. So that might make it work better. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, keep up the good work, please. Just Thank you. Uh, sudden decisions are often not the best ones, right? Correct. Are you going to be saying the full order then? We don't have one that was presented. Well, let's, I have an idea for that. So we need the full guardianship order presented. Okay, I'm going to put this on for next week to do two things. One, so you need to prepare that order, submit it to the clerk's office so I can sign it. Two, uh, if there are any problems at all, I want an update. Uh, three, if everything's going great, I'd appreciate an update, but I don't need to have one. I do believe there's an order on file already ready for you to sign from back in um, the original motion. When uh, Commissioner Nelson was presiding over it. Actually, it should be dated for April, sometime last April. I'm not. I do have a copy of it. Yeah, if I could grab it, it's in my briefcase. Okay. Well, I want it next week because I want to. Next week. So just yeah. have it ready next week. I want to okay. make sure everything goes well. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Very much appreciated. Um, what? I'm what sorry. Time? What day next week? The next 1030. Same time. Uh, what day? That Thursday. is the second, I believe. Yeah. November second at ten. Thursday the second, ten thirty. In, in person again, or on Zoom? We'll uh, all have to be in person. Yeah. I have to bring Normally Zoom, right. but uh, if you're here, I'd love to hear from you. Um, could I, by chance, get that wrote down? I'm sorry. Could I, by chance, get that wrote down? Sure. Thank I, you. Somebody, I can also follow up email at the second and the hearing date. Okay, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. So I will be up um, Friday at uh, five o'clock. Okay. And stop by the drug court office. Tell them what's going down. Tell them I told them to put you down for a little story. Thank you. All right. Good luck. I am absolutely shocked that she's facing zero consequences for essentially kidnapping her kid. What did you guys think? Thanks for watching.